Hi everyone, it's Rindon with TJ Free, and in this video I'm installing the new software on this Linux Mint computer to do video editing, image editing, uh, audio recording, and music processing. So everything we use here in the video studio. And as always, this is all 100% free and open source software. So I'm just going to quickly step you through the process of downloading it and installing it or getting it to work on Linux. Um, it's actually very easy. All this software will work on Windows, Linux, and Mac, and it's not paid at all. It's all 100% free and open source software. But if you like using this software, you can always get in touch with the developers and go to the official websites and donate to help um, further development of the software. Um, I'll also mention I do have free tutorials teaching how to use most of this software here on this channel on YouTube, and that's also 100% free. I start at a very basic level and teach you how to use uh, this software. So let's dive right in. I'll show you what I like to install in no particular order, but this is the, the software I install when I have a fresh um, version of Linux Mint, which if you're not following along, we built this computer here on the channel. Uh, it's sort of a custom higher-end uh, media editing computer, and then we installed Linux Mint on it, and so now we're installing all this software. Let's check it out. The easiest way to install software in Linux Mint is to just use the software manager. If we click in the bottom left hand corner and start typing in software, we see the software manager we can click on. And that brings up the software manager. It's like the app store on your phone. It has all the different programs uh, that you can install. So we, we can search by games, for example. We can go back, we can search for graphics programs that are 3D graphics programs. We see Blender comes up photography programs. We have a whole list of photography programs we can look through. We can also just search. So if we go back, we can search for like Inkscape, for example, and we see we can install Inkscape. We just click on it and it says uh, information about Inkscape. We have some screenshots. We have reviews. And to install it, we just click install. Um, one thing you're going to want to check out with the software manager, though, is that the version you're installing um, is the fairly relatively the latest version. The best way to get the, the latest cutting edge version of software um, on Linux Mint is going to be to download maybe like an app image directly from the website. Uh, that's kind of gives you the cutting edge. But this is a, a good easy way to go as well. And that's the way I'm going to show you. Um, we'll download a couple app, app images, I think, here. But for this, let's just click on install on Inkscape just to see the process. Um, it pops up with a dialog asking us to enter our password. So I'll put that in. And then it will download the files and install Inkscape. And then it'll be listed as a, under our installed programs. Um, we can see what programs are installed by just clicking on these three dots here and going to show installed applications. Um, we can also refresh the list. So if we go refresh the list of packages, it reaches out to the internet and it finds the latest uh, version of all of these programs just so we know that we're getting the, the latest version. So we have Inkscape there. I see a few other things like VLC is something I'm going to want to install. So I'll just click install here. Um, we'll want to install GIMP. So I'll search for GIMP. Um, and this says it's already installed. So maybe, I think maybe GIMP comes with the, with the Linux Mint. I'm not sure. Or maybe I installed this when I was trying to do a video earlier. In any event, we just search for what we want. Um, another one's Audacity. So you see how like incredibly quick this is. If you see this flat hub option, um, it's just a different way to install the software. You can actually install uh, a flat hub version and the other version concurrently, and they don't really um, talk to each other, which is kind of cool. I tend to like installing the flat hub version um, because it gives you a later version most of the times. Although in this case, it doesn't really matter. The version is the same. Um, you can always just check that version. So we'll install Audacity here. Um, we're going to install Krita. So let's see if these give us the latest version or not. So this is going to be version uh, 3, 4, 4, 2, 1. And then if we go to the flat hub version, so that was 3, 4, 4, 2, 1. We'll see what this one says. So version, where's the version here? This is going to be version 4.4.2. So in this case, installing the flat hub version is going to get us a whole, like a much, much newer version. So we're going to want to install the flat hub and not uh, the, uh, the regular, the older version of Krita. So I'll click install here. I am going to want Blender, so we'll search for Blender. Uh, we'll just click, uh, we'll do this one. I don't know if, again, let's just check these, uh, you know, 2.8.2 or 2.82. So the flat hub version is 2.91.2 um, as opposed to just the non flat hub version is going to be 2.82. So I want the latest version, so I'm going to install the, the, the flat hub version here. What else did we get? We got Krita, we got, um, oh, so we need L LMMS, LMMS, and that might be one, yeah, we can get the flat hub version of this. Actually, 
This is one of the tricky ones. Um, the flat hub version, I'm going to do the non flat hub version just because um, it, it messes with my VSTs sometimes. So I'm just going to install, or maybe I'll even do the, uh, yeah, we'll just install this one, version 1.2.1. 1 .1. And since we've waited a little while, it's going to ask us for our password again. Um, so we'll put in the password. So we'll install this. Um, what else? We got Audacity. Oh, Darktable is another one. I don't use Darktable a ton, but it is amazing. It's just because I don't do a lot with photography. So we'll get this uh, version of Darktable. And again, I don't know if all of these are the latest versions or not. Um, to tell you the truth, this isn't the method I usually use to install. It's the easiest method. And if you're just getting started with Linux Mint, which is kind of the, the purpose of these couple of videos I'm making is for beginners. Okay, I'm installing Caden Live now. Uh, I'm also going to install Shotcut. And this is just really nice not having to go to the to the websites. The package manager makes it really nice for this. I'm going to do the flat hub version of these. It's just nice to be able to just click install. Um, this will all take, especially on my internet, it's a little bit slower, so it's going to take a little while to get all these installed. Um, but the process, you can see, I could probably go through and get this all going in about six or seven minutes, get all the software on that I need to on a fresh computer, um, and then it'll take about an hour to download on my slow internet connection. Uh, but then we're then we're up and away and, and using it. Okay, one more, and it's one that I don't use terribly often, is um, Scribus. And so we use Scribus. It's a I should have been going along telling the what these things are. So Scribus is like an alternative to um, Adobe InDesign or Cork Express. It's a desktop publishing software. And you can read about all of these in here. But um, if you're a follower of this channel, you've probably seen some of these. I have videos um, kind of going over demonstrating some of this software um, and also tutorial teaching how to use it all. So we'll install Scribus here. If you decide you want to get rid of a program, you can also uninstall the program by just searching for it or by clicking on these three lines and going to show installed applications. So this little green circle with a check mark shows that if the program is installed. So if we want to uninstall Caden Live, for example, we'll just click on it and click remove. It'll prompt us for our password and then it'll just remove it. It's very quick. So now it's uninstalled. I want to show you another way that you can download and use software on Linux Mint without using the software manager because sometimes there'll be a program you want to use and you can't find it um, in this you know, app store software manager. And so uh, we'll minimize this. Um, the first way I'm going to show you is by using the command line interface. So if we go down here we can just click on terminal to bring up this terminal window or we can click the LM icon and just t start typing in terminal to open the terminal and that'll open up this command line interface. And this just tells us, if we, we can get into desktop real quick, that we're into the desktop on our computer. And I just want to show you what this is doing. If we type touch, we can go hello.txt and hit enter, and it creates a text file on our desktop called hello.txt. And if we say remove, uh, well, uh, we can just type in rm, and we can go hello.txt, it gets rid of it. So this is basically, we can see all the programs I'm running. If we type in top, we can see all the, the different um, processes and programs running on the computer right now and we type Q to get out of that. This is basically just controlling the computer. Everything's happening in Linux on this text format form. So this is like a lower level um, for installing software if we want to. And um, to do that we can just use this APT is sort of like the software, a software manager that we can use that's already installed on Linux Mint. So we type APT and then we can just say list and it shows a list of all the possible programs we can install. So to install one of these, I saw like VLC, which we already installed. We can do like WeChat, you know, so we do, you know, VLC, um, we say um, apt instead of list, and then we just say install, and we go WeChat, which I don't really want to do, but um, that would install it. But the first thing we need to do, just like we did with the software manager, is um, update the cache and make sure we're getting all the latest um, information about programs that we can possibly install. And to do that, we type in um, really it's apt update but we need to use um, administrator privileges so we go to the beginning of it and type in sudo apt update and then since we typed in that sudo we have to put in a password so we'll type in a password here and it just reaches out to all these different repositories updates to the latest um, information about packages that we can install um, it's a little bit confusing, but since we uninstalled Caden Live and now we updated everything, we should be able to reinstall Caden Live. So we'll type in sudo because we want to do this as an, as an administrator. And then we type in apt, the name of the 
package manager that we want to install with and then we say the command install and we just type in kden live and if we're not sure if it even has it we can hit the tab key right here and it'll do an autocomplete and it says the name of the of possible packages we can install so we'll just say kden live hit enter and now it reaches out downloads it and it's installed now and we can even run it by just typing in kden uh, kden live which is the video editor that i like to use and here we are we're in Caden Live now we can edit videos and it's running if one way about launching it this way is that if we close this window now uh, this terminal window it'll also close the the actual software running but now we can see if we type go down to the LM icon and type in Caden Live we see it is installed here as well um, another video editor I like to use is Olive Video Editor I'll drag this over real quick I want to show you um, an app image so if we go to get Olive um, we select our operating system, which is Linux in this case. This gives us some instructions for installing Olive, um, depending on our system, which we are using Linux Mint 19 or later. So if it wasn't available in our repository, which it actually is, we could copy each of these commands, right click and copy, paste them in the terminal, and we can install Olive that way, uh, even though it may not be associated with our package manager. Another thing to do is using Snap. I think I'll cover this in future videos, but it's sort of like the flat packs. It's just a way of isolating software and running it um, it can snaps a, a good way to install software, but, but I want to show you this uh, app image. So it says what the app image is available on GitHub. So we click here and we can go to GitHub in this case um, is where they're hosting it and we can download it. Uh, oh, now they've moved it to nightly. So we can download the nightly version, the most up to date version, uh, which looks like right now it's December 30th, 2020. And we just go over here to Linux and go to download and then it downloads this app image. So that's finished downloading. We can click this folder here to get into it. And I know it went to my downloads directory by default. So we should go into here and go to downloads. And then we see right here, we have this olive app image. And let me change this so we can see the icon a little bit differently. If I right click on this, well, if I try to launch it right now, uh, this basically this is the olive video editor packaged into one package. Forget about this, this is something I downloaded earlier. Um, so everything we need to run all of is packaged right inside here and we can actually run this off of a USB drive we can copy it to a different computer a different Linux computer it'll run on on a wide variety of different Linux operating systems without having to install uh, but if we click on it right now it just says what unknown file type you know what am I supposed to do with this and that's because the permissions aren't set usually when you download an app image it's for security reasons it's set to not launch unless you tell it to so we right click and go to properties and then we take this window here and we just say permissions and then click this button right here allow executing file as program and then click close and now when we click on it it will launch uh, all the video editor so now here's the all the video editor running from this file right here this is the whole this is everything this is it's running from right here it's just uh, not installed necessarily if we were to delete this it would be completely removed from our computer gone Actually, it's in the trash now, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, so I know I didn't really go through and talk about what these different programs are. Oh, you know what I want to do since this does have it? Let me just show you this. This is kind of a cool thing. If we go to trash, we right click and go to restore. It puts it back where it was, downloads. Um, and we right click, we can go open in terminal. So now we're opening our downloads. This is a good thing to do um, if you're worried about, sometimes you can, if you're downloading something uh, and you want to make sure that you're getting the actual real file. This gives us this uh, SHA-1 hash right here. So it says, if I just resize this, it says this is a hash of that file. So when you download it, if you want to make sure you're getting the, the real version, you can just type in, um, uh, I think you type in SHA-1, SHA-1 hash maybe, and then the name of that file, which is all of something. Let me see if SHA-1 is even, if there's something like SHA-1. Oh, SHA-1 sum, sorry, SHA-1 sum and then the name of that file. So we type in that olive file, which is capital O, it's case sensitive. And if you hit tab, it auto completes. So we hit tab, it'll just auto complete for you. And then it tells us that the SHA, the hash of this file is 79E3F. So we compare that to this 79E3F and they are the same. And so we know that the file we downloaded is the real one. It, it wasn't tampered with, and it wasn't. It doesn't have a virus unless it was packaged with a virus from the developers. Um, it hasn't been modified since then. So that's kind of cool. When you're downloading files, if it gives you the option, I think we can MD5 that as well. How do we do that? Just yeah, MD5 sum is a different hashing um, algorithm. 
oh whoops we didn't tell it what to do so we do md5 sum and then that file and it tells us here's the md5 80625 80625 so that it's the same um, kind of fingerprint for the file anyway that's a little more advanced thing you don't always have to do that but it's a, if you're worried about not getting the correct um, about it being tampered with you can verify that you're getting the same file the developer intended you to get I know we went over some of that very quickly, but hopefully you found this video informative. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And again, I have a lot of video tutorials teaching most of the software that we looked at today. So if you're interested in learning them, I start from the very basics and just have free tutorials here on this channel that you can learn, uh, start learning how to use some of these free and open source programs. But as always, thanks so much for watching and I look forward to catching you in the next video.